Hello everybody, and welcome back on my channel. In this video, I will show to you a discussion on a virtual blockchain summit streamed on BBS.Live and in specific the scalability and the interoperability session. So let's see it. Uh, thank you everyone for, uh, for joining uh, tonight or today, depends on where you, you live. Uh, we have a panel on uh, scalability and interoperability. And we have uh, uh, with us five um, very illustrious uh, uh, guests. I will let uh, every, each one of them introduce themselves. So uh, first, let's start with Jack. Oh, yeah, actually, I'm Wei Jia Zhang. Uh, actually, oh. I'm with the VP of uh, Engineering of oh, OneChain. Okay. Yeah, I'll change my name here, screen name here. Uh, yeah. yeah, I'm VP of Engineering of OneChain. Uh, OneChain is a, is a star project that uh, was focused on uh, uh, bridging uh, blockchains. Uh, today, we know that Ethereum and uh, uh, Bitcoin and the EOS do not talk to each other. And OneChain's mission is to build bridges yeah. for that. So we are able to oh, connect yeah, actually, with, uh, I'm with Ethereum, connect with uh, Bitcoin and EOS already on that. And then next step, we are we'll build, working on two-way bridge to, to connect uh, the transfer asset from one chain to other blockchain as well. And then we're we are doing the direct bridge as well. And we're also working with EA, uh, the ECM, Enterprise ECM Alliance, to build the uh, standards and specifications so that we can make it easier to build the core infrastructure to, uh, to, to bridge all these blockchains together for both public and private blockchains. And great to meet you here. That's great. Uh, now, uh, Denis. Yeah, hi, uh, Dennis. Everyone here from Kyber Network, and I'll keep it very simple. Basically, Kyber Network is a liquidity protocol that's deployed on Ethereum, and the way it makes the market is it pulls in liquidity from many different sources, including professional market makers, including existing um, decentralized exchanges like Uniswap. It brings them together and it pushes it downstream to dozens of different dApps like wallets, like games, like different kinds, anything that requires one token to be swapped to another. It goes through Kyber, gets swapped to what the other side basically needs. And that means you can stick it into DeFi and all sorts of different crazy things. But that's like Kyber in a nutshell. Okay. Uh, sorry. Uh, Larry? Hi everyone, my name is Larry I'm from IOTEX. Uh, IOTEX is building the internet of trusted things. So uh, we focus on the intersection of blockchain, IOT and privacy and starting to power the first privacy preserving smart devices on our network. Uh, in the IOT space, you know, the two topics of this panel, scalability and interoperability are crucial, right? Scalability to ensure that the streaming data from multiple devices is managed correctly and interoperability in the sense of providing uh, the ability for devices to talk to each other. Um, so, you know, outside of just uh, blockchain foundational scalability and interoperability, we also think about things on, you know, off-chain and layer two. Um, so just happy to uh, provide some insights and thanks so much for the invite. Great. Alin? Hi, guys. I'm uh, Alin from Modex. Uh, Modex is a research and development company in uh, the blockchain technology. Our main priority is to... Um, Enable, enable enterprises to adopt blockchain technologies in their current uh, infrastructure, their current software. So uh, what we are trying to do is basically to take the blockchain technology all the, and all its benefits and to um, put them all together with the traditional software dat databases uh, in, in the first place. Um, we, are, uh, we are focused on uh, helping company to understand that uh, blockchain is not necessarily a dark hole and uh, it's something which uh, can actually help and uh, this is what we are uh, we are focusing focusing mostly okay and uh, last but not least benny uh, i don't think i i cannot hear you i'm not sure if the 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 others can hear you no. No. No one can hear. Okay, until Benny fixes his uh, his microphone, uh, let's uh, let me. No. 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 Okay. Yeah. Now, now it works. Yeah. Yeah. Does yeah. it work? Yeah. Yeah. No? It's working. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, okay. So I, I'm um, Benjamin Minku, founder and CEO of Elrond, and. Um, Elrond is a layer one 
solution, which means we've built a blockchain from scratch to bring a 1000x improvement in throughput, execution speed and transaction costs, such that um, we finally can have a transition from dial-up to broadband applied to the blockchain space. So I'm quite happy to have this discussion and be part of the panel. Okay, thank you. Thank you everyone for, uh, for your introduction. So as I was going to say, uh, the topic uh, we will cover today is scalability and uh, interoperability. And I will first um, look at scalability. And if you ask why do we need scalability, remember that the technologies that we use today in, that are widely spread in terms of uh, blockchains, uh, Bitcoin and not so much Ethereum, they, uh, they reach a speed of, let's say, in Ethereum's case, 15 transactions per second. And uh, if we look at all the old population of the world, which uh, and we only want half of them to use one of these blockchains, uh, that I, I've done a short calculation here and it tells me that uh, each of us, if each of the 3 billion people that would, uh, would uh, want to run a, a transaction on the blockchain, will need to do a transaction every 10 years. Uh, that's uh, with, with the current uh, scalability level. And um, that's why uh, this topic is so important. And I want to, uh, to each of you to give me uh, uh, an impression of where is this scalability uh, taking us? Uh, what are the... Uh, you know the trends. What are the ways in which we can achieve this uh, this thousand uh, x, as Benny said, the improvement in uh, in terms of uh, transactions? So uh, let's wager. Start. Well, thank thank you. Yeah, actually, I worked for Dell for thirteen years, and I I look at this problem in different ways. I, I actually I'm thinking more about interoperability than scalability. Uh, because uh, scalability uh, involves a lot of uh, computer in, computing improvement, not just the software itself, no, not just the blockchain itself. It also relies on the hardware and other parallel computing, other things. And I, my view is very different. I think that we need uh, big companies like uh, IBM and like uh, Dell and, and and AMD and 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 Intel to join this this force to to really really revolutionize the the scalability. Uh, I know there are some plasma and other things that they are working on. Those are at the uh, OS uh, level above, the application level. And I think to truly improve scalability, we probably need to work it from hardware up. And there are two ways. One is to scale out and one is to scale up, right? And, and the mainframe is basically a scale up. And I think this must be a scale out and there should be some solution with uh, both the memory assets, the storage assets, and also the computing power improvement and also uh, parallel processing. And I really, that's very computer specific. I really hope that big company can join force into this one to improve it. Okay, uh, thanks. Uh, the, the way I, sorry, if I, yeah, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, yeah I was going to invite you. Yeah, I mean the the way I see it, like uh, we have we have the the blockchain trilemma, right? So it can either be like scalable and decentralized, decentralized or secure, or secure scalable. And right now you're saying, okay, without without if we have scalability, like which combination can we have and which combination can we not have, right? And leaving scalability out and having decentralization and security is the one that you actually want for now to begin with. You know, because we're still so early on that we don't even need the scalability yet while we build the foundation of our security and our decentralization. Because if we skip decentralization, well, with security and scalability, you already have something close to Visa. I'm not saying that's a bad thing. And there's like many companies that do a great job. You know, some of you guys build, like work on hybrid approaches and that's amazing, you know, and for enterprise, that's what needed. But looking for me, like what crypto is exci exciting about is this decentralization where you have control of your own funds. So for me, I would always place decentralization as a core of that equation and hope that scalability will one day be worked on. You know, that's my view of it. So I'm, I'm not, I don't think it's a problem that we don't have it just yet. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you think that we are way too early to, to be worrying about, uh, and in, in, a way it's, in a way it's true because there are some, uh, there are some uh, changes that are needed both in terms of uh, perception of the users also in terms of uh, perception of the uh, 
let's say structures that that the users will be engaging in into this uh larry what's your view on this yeah my view on this is that you know uh, i agree with both points that um uh Weja and and dennis had just indicated right um i think that from my point of view you have to think about the end user and what they're using your platform for right if they're a payments processor then of course they need you know uh thousands of transactions per second eventually but if your your platform is meant more for like an identity root of trust um where you know you're just persisting identities and doing a lot of off-chain scaling off-chain transactions you don't necessarily need to have you know the thousands of transactions per second of course you can't be stagnant at two or three transactions per second there's a minimum bar that you need to cross but you know the the, the nature of consensus and scalability is also different from network to network right i believe that you know uh you know multiple rounds of confirmations also adds to the lag time so you know things like instant finality you know iotex network has five second block times with instant finality and you know for the purposes of what we're even what we're doing in the iot space which is arguably uh you know very uh scalability demanding uh you know i see that you know we're already working closely with uh, the end users to figure out exactly what they need right they need trust and they need decentralization as dennis mentioned you know scalability once you try to uh, run more things on chain is definitely needed but um yeah i think we're we're getting there right but i think focusing on uh the other parts of that scalability trilemma decentralization and security i do agree with dennis those are very important factors for today uh alin how do the things look from from your point of view i understand that you you focus more on the on the higher uh layers of of the of the spectrum and you try to hide somehow the complexities of of uh, the blockchain themselves uh, for the users yes uh, our focus is to uh keep uh, the the end users and even developers as far as possible from the inside of the blockchains so not necessarily because it's uh, very complex but somehow people get scared when they hear about that they imagine that uh, it's a huge cost and if you have to hire a developer and blockchain is going to be very expensive uh, but um, getting back to the the problem uh, the discussion we, we have tested a lot of uh, blockchain engine uh, commercial non-commercial even those out there and um, i believe that scalability is one of the major features of um, of of the of the blockchain technology i mean um, noticing blockchain many years ago uh, for me was one of the most impressive things that um, a simple piece of code is able to run in so many deployments all around the world without any assistance without any uh, i don't know support team uh, not necessarily too many bugs so um but uh, in the same time i i, I don't uh, take sides i mean i believe that blockchain should not be considered uh if it's not all together it's not blockchain i think everyone can choose from blockchain wherever they they find suitable maybe just the uh, immutability of data uh, maybe the decentralization uh, maybe the scalability so um it shouldn't be a mix uh, if it's not all of this is not blockchain i think like any other any other technology we should adopt it where we need it when we need it if it if it fits the purpose it's just fine okay so uh basically the the idea is that everybody should uh, choose from the, the three aspects that were uh, previously mentioned scalability decentralization security should pick the two that are most passionate about and uh, stick with those two. Uh, uh, Benny, uh, I, I know that uh, Elrond is, I think, the lowest level possible uh, out of all the, the, the projects here. So what's your view on scalability? I mean, I think I know it, but let's... Uh, yeah, for the sake of the discussion, uh, I, I'll uh, say that um, I'll take a much more contrarian view than the, the two, two, especially two viewpoints expressed at first. Uh, first of all, I don't think there's um, any hope of the larger companies solving these super difficult problems, uh, just because in practice, the more um, 
independent parties you have trying to solve a problem, essentially the problem becomes much more complex as a function of overhead in interests, communication, and different other problems that are not foreseeable from the outside. But uh, what happens is you start working with 10 other companies and then 10 years down the road, you sort of uh, are still working on a problem and have not found a solution. Uh, I'm not saying that nobody can do it. I'm just saying that from practice, this is why startups work. It's a bunch of people in a, in a garage uh, putting, pulling uh, days and nights and so forth. And at some point, if they, they find the solving solution, um, the, the interesting solution at that point, uh, it moves forward. And um, the, the second point is, especially with respect to the convention that is um, called the scalability trilemma, uh, which, which has been useful, but useful in a sense of um, lazy uh, intellectual construction, in, in a sense that if you cannot solve something, then you, you'll try to find some sophisticated explanation why this cannot be solved. And then um, until someone proves that this whole construct does not necessarily apply or had some limitation, because obviously it was there, there was some utility to it. But um, I think Elrond is here to basically prove that you can build a new layer one based on um, adaptive state sharding and secure proof of stake that is fully on chain that can process more than 10,000 transactions per second uh, with the five seconds latency and the 100x less cost than, than the alternatives today. Not, not in two or three years, uh, but today. And I think this is super excited, exciting because as mentioned in the beginning, um, I believe that one of the important inflection points in the early days of the internet was basically the transition from this dial-up to broadband era. And um, although there's another problem uh, in the blockchain space, which is the UX problem, um, the scalability problem is a, a huge obstacle if you look at the different use cases that have been tried and, and the reasons why they, they did not work and so forth. So um, to, to sum it up, I think uh, this is probably the most exciting period uh, possible for the blockchain space, um, not, not only from a macro standpoint, um, because people find an alternative and, and to the global economy, the conventional fiat currencies and so forth, but also because the um, technology has fundamentally improved very, very significantly. And this year um, will be super exciting to, to um, for us, especially to launch the, the Elrond mainnet in a few weeks, but then also to see all the other projects that have been working on, on interesting stuff and see them come to market and start um, building um, real adoption pipelines. Okay, so I, I realized now that uh, there, was, there is one person which we skipped. Uh, he joined uh, late uh, in the role of the of the panel. Uh, Kadan, please uh, introduce yourself and uh, yourself and give us a one minute uh, uh, overview of this problem of scalability. Hi guys, hey, nice to meet you all. Uh, thanks for your time and participation in this panel. So my name is Kadan Stadelman. I head up the tech layer at the Komodo platform. Um, so just in one like simple sentence, like what's Komodo platform, right? I mean, we build a huge set of different tools and technologies for blockchain uh, infrastructure, interoperability, scalability, etc. So the main point with Komodo is that we provide a smart chain platform that's built on a multi-chain architecture, right? Why multi-chain architecture, okay? I personally believe we have sort of like two... Uh, perspectives or two ways, right, to uh, approach this scalability problem. Uh, first, um, well, it's not a solution, but first way is basically just crying and waiting for the tech to mature and just like complain about tech not being mature and ready enough, basically infrastructure-wise, um, to carry the load for the scalability that we are all targeting, right? I think approach number two is basically using the tech and the infrastructure, the physical limitations that we have right now and designing our architectures in a way that would enable us to still scale up infinitely, right? Uh, I, we just believe that this single chain architecture design that, that we are basically seeing across the entire industry um, 
is sort of incompatible with our current physical infrastructure limitations. Thus, we won't ever reach the, the limits we want, right? It's pretty much all around this is like uh, PR marketing, blah, blah, sorry to call it like that. But we all know that you can't bypass the technical limitations. So by having multi-chain architectures means multiple blockchains, right? Building a consensus layer in order to achieve, right? The bandwidth that we need and that we want, right? And as for the interoperability layer, just give me 30 seconds for this part. I think that's like quite, uh, quite important. So as for interoperability, we've uh, worked out uh, a DEX system that's basically a third generation technology. And we're using this tech right now in an almost production ready environment. So if you get like on Google Play Store and you type in Atomic DEX, that's what our tech is called, you'll be able to download the trustless decentralized multi-coin wallet with a full DEX integrated. And this DEX is an interop layer to different blockchains, right? We were talking Ethereum, ERC. We really cover over 90% of the CMC, of the coin market cap list. Uh, regarding the compatibility of atomic DAX. Um, so you're already able today to use this tech to trade again Bitcoin, uh, Komodo, Lycon, whatever, against Ethereum, ERC tokens. But we're also working on second and third generation protocol integrations, such as Tezos, right? We've implemented full Tezos uh, support. So I think we all across the entire industry, we've proven that Yes, it is possible to build these uh, uh, interop layers and we are able to bridge right all these different blockchain protocols and technologies. But trust me, we reached a point where it's not just about, oh, let's bridge Bitcoin to uh, Coin X or whatever. We've reached a point where we have to figure like how to bridge our industry as such to the rest of the world and of the industry, right? The, the next interoperability layers won't be DEX platforms or DeFi systems or whatsoever, right? It will be it, it will be systems that make blockchain technology compatible with the rest of the non-blockchain uh, tech-based industry, right? So, I mean, okay, I believe. So, I so let, let's let's because uh, we are like five Sorry, minutes. Quite, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I just uh, like to but anyway, the out. the idea is, and I will let everyone uh, just for a minute, yes, but not the minute that uh, Kadan took the real minute. Uh, I will uh, ask you, so scalability, uh, an alternative to scalability is to have interoperability. So if, if you cannot have a system that does a lot of transactions per second, maybe you have a system that does a few transactions, maybe you have many systems that do few transactions per second, but they talk to one another. So let's see, uh, let's start again from Weija. One minute, please, uh, on, on this interoperability issue. Is it a solution or not? You're, you're muted. Oh, yeah, thank that. you. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, I'm the co chair of uh, um, Cross-Chain Interoperability Task Force of EA Enterprise Experience Alliance. Actually, I did a lot of research on that one. And there are three layers for interoperability. One is the interoperability for tokens. And then I think uh, Ron Resnick, who, who used to be the EA uh, director, he formed uh, IWA Interwork uh, Alliance to work on this uh, token interoperability. That's one layer. And second layer is the interoperability for blockchain clients. And I think EA is working on that. There are several specifications for that already. And we are working, one chance of focus is on cross-chain interoperability so that you can let uh, uh, different blockchain talking to each other, whether they're private or public. And I think that's extremely important. And we are at the stage to make a TCP IP kind of achievement for internet be kind of done in blockchain so that we are letting different blockchain talking to each other. And I believe there will be thousands, millions of blockchain coming together for both private and public. And there's a definitely a need and a chance for a blockchain community to achieve that, to achieve the cross-chain durability. So I'm looking forward to that and okay. looking forward to working with other people. Yeah. Okay. Denise? Um, I mean, like, I think it's exciting that there's projects that are working on it. But I think like in the grand scheme of things, I would rather see like these projects actually capture value within their own ecosystems first before thinking about interoperability, because right now there doesn't seem to be as much adoption and traction as we would have hoped before. Like looking at the last two, three years, the organic growth wasn't as much as I'd like to see. 
But if we can overcome that, then yeah, I think interoperability is going to be like is going to be key to connecting so many different kind of systems, and that's that's the beauty of it. It's all decentralized, so we can all kind of talk to each other and connect as long as you get these bridges right, and you guys are building it. But it's not something like I, as an outsider, think about for the next one or two years will be like a priority. Okay, Larry. Yeah, I mean, I think you know we're we're talking about very project specific things right now. Like, let's let's dumb down the conversation a bit and just talk about you know what what are we really doing here, right? Like, this whole blockchain industry is meant to enable new types of use cases, right? And it's really important to think about what those use cases mean, right? So to draw an analogy to the real world, right? Uh, think about a race car, an armored car, and a normal car, right? Normal car is just what we use every day. Race car ultra scalable, get things from A to B in a super fast way. And an armored car is something that will protect all of your assets with a surety, but it's only going to go like 30, 40 miles an hour, right? What we're talking about here is trying to create an armored race car, which, you know, it's combining multiple uh, different projects here, what we're working on to ultimately reach that goal, right? Interoperability is the same thing. Um, so I think that, you know, all of these fundamental components are very, very important and uh different projects are working on different parts of the tech stack right um but at the end of the day you know i don't think it's really a discussion of course scalability is important of course interoperability is important but what's the path to get there and what use cases are you know we're not designing uh solutions looking for problems we're trying to find problems that need solutions right so just my two cents there okay so i'm sorry but Alin and benny you only have 30 seconds each so please Alin, very quickly your one idea about interoperability. I believe uh, blockchain, it's at its early stages and uh, interoperability doesn't uh, uh, have too many use cases uh, apart from cryptocurrencies, of course. Uh, but um, we find ways to use blockchain to facilitate interoper interoperability between uh, different databases. So basically, we uh, we use blockchain to um, have the same database structure in different database engines, like uh, one MongoDB and one uh, I don't know Oracle or or uh, anything else. So uh, in conclusion, I think uh, uh, like Larry said, it depends what's the problem, and then you find the the right solution to see if uh, blockchain it is an option or or not. Okay, and Benny, last. Um, I I, I would say again uh, that uh, the I, I it was interesting uh, how uh, our colleague here uh, from Yotex uh, IoT uh, has uh, used the analogy, but it breaks down because if you look at the cyber truck, you basically have an armored truck which is super fast, uh, super secure, and super sexy. So uh, I think today we can basically build uh, these architectures, but I do think that um, interoperability is a secondary um, principle to solving scalability. If you combine several protocols that are unscalable, you just lose a lot more energy in the intercommunication between them. And uh, it, from seven transactions per second, you'll achieve three between the. Uh, okay, the... okay. Uh, we, uh, unfortunately, we are <laughs> at the end of our time. Uh, I would like to, to talk more, but for now, let's, uh, let's, uh, I, I will thank uh, everyone for joining today. And uh, let's uh, stay for, for the next uh, uh, sessions. Okay. Uh, so with that being said, I will see you next time.